New Year resolutions aren't the easiest to uphold, but it's a great way to start the year with intentions to better yourself. It obviously doesn't happen overnight, but change is still a step in the right direction. Recognizing you need change is even harder. Sometimes, and I get it, outside opinions or suggestions aren't welcome. I mean, imagine telling an archaeologist they're just basically grave robbers with a degree. Or mechanics, they're just trained to use tools instead of their bare hands. That's a fight waiting to happen right there. Let's Michael Jackson ourselves and take a look at the man in the mirror, shall we? I love that song. And call a spade a spade. Some of us out there are bad drivers, but perhaps before these traits permanently set in, let's review some of the key points on what makes a bad driver. Like I said, change doesn't happen overnight, but maybe, just maybe, we might want to ditch these habits like yesterday's newspaper and drive into the new year truly with a new start. All cars come with signal lights. They are required to come with them by law. They serve the purpose of informing other drivers where you want to go and if you are a hazard on the road. There are drivers out there that unfortunately do not use this feature in their vehicles. Unless you are a mind reader or a psychic, it becomes tough to see where another driver might be going without the use of these features. Using your signal lights can tell people where you want to go so they can adjust accordingly and avoid accidents. Remember, this might be a hard concept, but you do not lose anything by using your indicators or signal lights. People might not let you in immediately when merging through traffic, but it's always best to make your intentions about merging very clear. Oh, and also, don't use your hazard lights during a heavy downpour. Unless you're stopped on the side of the road, turn your lights on and slow down. Using your hazard lights while driving is the equivalent of, God, I don't even know where to begin. Lane markings are there for a reason as it helps maximize the limited space that cars have and share with other forms of transportation on the road. If you take up two lanes, are indecisive, or are too slow to choose one, you can end up causing traffic, or worse, an accident. Now this holds especially true if you pair this without signaling. When driving, it's best to stick to your lane as much as possible unless you have to overtake or if you are about to make a turn. Remember, you are not the only one using the road and you don't own it. Don't be like Dory. Just keep going straight. What? She didn't know what she was talking about. She had like memory loss or whatever. She could have said just go straight. You don't know. There's most likely more people that don't use signal lights properly and drive in the middle of two lanes than there are aggressive drivers. But there are also less likely to cause injury than aggressive drivers. When you get behind the wheel, understand that there are real lives involved and real consequences that can happen. If you are prone to road rage, we advise you to try taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture. Now, I'll admit though, easier said than done, because if you try to understand why this person did this or that, more often than not, the conclusion will be that they were just being a dick, plain and simple. So, let's flip it. Try and remember that violence won't get you anywhere unless being pulled over or worse, jail is where you really want to be. Chances are you won't see that guy just cut you off anytime soon anyway. The less you make mountains out of molehills, the easier your life will be. Trust me. The act of driving itself is already a taxing task for certain people as they have to constantly be aware of their surroundings. You have to check your mirrors, keep track of the other cars on the road, in the front of you, behind you, beside you, step on the accelerator, make sure Jack doesn't fall asleep when filming, and much, much more. So why add another thing to already a complex process? We thankfully have a law in place against this, but unfortunately, we continue to see infractions on a daily basis. At times, you don't even have to be beside the driver. You can easily tell by their driving characteristics from the rear. It has been proven that distracted driving can lead to accidents, so it's best to keep your eyes on the road, and for the meantime, not on your phone or tablet watching the latest videos from AutoDeal on our YouTube channel, which you're currently subscribed to. And if not, please do, so that you don't miss on any of our videos while you're not driving. Shameless plug. Guilty. Guilty, 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 guilty. Yep, I've seen a vehicle minding its own business, driving impeccably at the prescribed speed limit in the proper right-hand lane. I have, in the past, convinced myself to be faster by half a kilometer per hour, even if it takes me half an hour to overtake, like an idiot. I felt I must be in front, for I am speed. That, however, is being a mellow idiot. There are much worse out there. 
Competitive driving is fine on the racetrack or on local or across circuits, but it becomes a huge and potentially deadly problem once you bring this out onto public roads. While it can be fun to enjoy outmaneuvering other drivers on public roads, there are real dangers and lives at risk when you do this. Plainly put, it's vicious. The compromise? Thankfully, there are proper avenues where you can address this need for speed, north or south of the capital for starters and other sanctioned venues around the country. You know, someone once told me that one of the hardest things to do was say and really mean the following words. Forgive me. I'm sorry. The way I see it, to quietly admit to yourself that you could easily be a bad driver is easily in the top 10. To do something about it could be divine. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. See you soon.